When I heard another streaming service was trying to earn my subscription, I'm sure I had the same reaction the rest of you did. I rolled my eyes until I was dizzy. But of course, I was going to buy it, though. No matter how stupid I said it was, and how I was tired of all these services popping up, I was going to miss this one. Chance to go back and revisit the catalog of shows and Disney Channel originals. It was a siren call that I could never resist. You'd be lucky to catch an episode of Even Stevens on a 4 o'clock in the morning, but now I had a way to binge watch it. How could I possibly pass that up? And then they announced the Mandalorian would be releasing with the service? Well, they might as well have hogtied me and dragged my credit card right out of my pocket. I'm not even that big of a Star Wars fan, but a, a good trailer is a good trailer. I'm here for it. I, like many others, waited for launch day, not paying much mind to it as I was excited, but had plenty of other things I needed to catch up on. The concept of pre-ordering a streaming platform was bizarre to me, so I just bought the thing when it launched. I mean, when it did, I knew I was going to watch The Mandalorian first. I mean, didn't everyone? But I decided to look around at the other offerings first to see just how deep the cuts were going to get. Small doses of nostalgia flared up as I passed by the shows that would keep me company after school let out. The movies that I would watch with my family. It all felt rather cozy. After a while of searching, I moved on to the cartoons. First looking at what was in Out of the Vault before moving down and finding a curiosity in Mickey Mouse through the years. I had never been much into these cartoons as they were before my time, but now... I thought it'd be interesting to go through and watch the Mickey Mouse brand become what it is today. But of course, I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect launch anymore. So, as I was scrolling through the offerings, I was booted back to my PlayStation menu with an error message. Something about the servers, which wasn't all that odd. I played a lot of video games, and you know, this is just par for the course when it comes to trying something the first time. I sat back for a few minutes, and I hoped that if I could at least get into a show, then I wouldn't get booted midstream. A glance at my phone and a Google search revealed that tons of users were already reporting a connection issue. It's possible that I would just have to let it be and try again the next night, but I didn't want to have the show spoiled for me, so, you know, I tried again. Sitting for a moment as my connection was being established, I found the menu put me right where I left off, looking at Mickey's old movies. Only this time the menu was acting bizarre. Another tile kept popping in and out of the list. It would appear right after Ye Old World and push the other movies to the side, like there was supposed to be another option there, but it kept disappearing. Whenever the blank tile would appear, I noticed my cursor would flick over to it like it was something that could actually click. Now I had a show to watch elsewhere, but it was, it was nearly hypnotic watching the menu bugging out from the strange, intrusive tile. It didn't go like that for too long until the menu finally settled down, and to my surprise, there it was. In fact, it was a new movie for me to uh, select. And now that I've already seen it, it's not a movie. It feels more like a commercial. The new title even had its own preview picture and the title written in fun cartoon font. The movie was called Mickey's Great World Parade. The thumbnail had Mickey standing tall with his arms behind his back. He was sporting some sort of formal attire with tassels on his shoulders, kind of like you'd see in the old military uniforms. Well, this film, like the two before it, was still in black and white. I'd never heard of this movie before, so naturally curious, I clicked on it. The screen went to black, apart from a small blue circle in the middle as the film loaded. My PS4 was working very hard, as I could hear it whirring like it just launched the newest Call of Duty. After waiting for a moment, the film started up, and I saw Mickey, just as he was in the thumbnail, walking down the street. His walk cycle was so incredibly animated. Each movement was so smooth and exaggerated to the most appealing way. It only took a few seconds for me to see just how much quality had been put into this film. It's like the whole studio worked tirelessly to make it the best that it could possibly be. Now, don't get me wrong. The Mickey films that I watched later are certainly charming. They have a great quality for the time that it is. This was in another league of its own. I could have watched this on a 4K TV, and you'd swear it was meant to be seen that way. Needless to say, I was awestruck. The, nothing I appreciate more than some top-notch animation, and remembering how the menu bugged out, I thought it might be something that I wasn't meant to see. See, I was right. There's no way I was supposed to see that film. Mickey continued walking down the street, as adoring onlookers started walking alongside him. Even the cars on the side of the road were bumping up and down in the rhythm of the song. It sounded like some kind of circus music, but the quality of the sound didn't match the animation at all. 
had that old-timey fuzz over it. it. Seemed to cut out periodically or become muffled like, like someone put a pillow over the speakers. And still, Mickey marched on as animated as ever, but never dropping posture or moving his clasped hand away from his back. And this went on for about 30 seconds. Like I said, the film in its entirety wasn't very long. It runs about four to five minutes. Now, as the adoring onlookers continued with Mickey, they began to look like they were getting tired or that they were getting older with each step. But still, they marched on with Mickey, who was jovial as ever. The view started to swivel, showing me the back of Mickey's head. Then it started pulling out like a drone lifting up into the sky. And I could, I could see just how many people Mickey had following him all represented by little little black ant-like dots. There were easily hundreds of them, if not thousands, all following Mickey's march. I could also see a large brick wall that ran horizontally until it was past the vision of the frame. And beyond it was another city. But the city appeared to be more industrial than the one they were marching away from. Large and boring, rectangular buildings that looked like aircraft hangars. Tall smokestacks, cartoonishly huffing smoke in the sky. Immediately, I felt a coldness about that place. It all seemed so so manufactured and, and purposeful. But before I could get a look at it any further, the camera started panning down, down to Mickey. With him in the center of the frame, he halted his advance at the gate that led through this massive brick wall. The people who were following him, however, they didn't stop. They continued walking through the gate. None of them ever touched Mickey. The crowd parted as if, as if, Touching him meant death. My eyes couldn't pull away from Mickey's hands, still clasped tightly behind his back, as the crowd of people endlessly walked through the gate. When I did avert my gaze, I noticed that several things had changed. The crowd was no longer acting like cartoons. They were shuffling, shuffling along like, like someone was pulling them by the neck, dragging their feet, limping through the gate. The soundtrack shifted as well. The once cheery, although poor quality, circus music had become a series of sharp, nonsensical sounds, all, all layering over each other. And I saw Mickey's back rise like he was taking a large breath and lower once he released it. Mickey turned to face the camera and moved his mouth. There was no sound associated with him talking, but the subtitles read, Let's go see the parade. He started walking again this time with less animation behind his stride. Quality was still there, but Mickey himself stopped bouncing all over the place like he was before. He walked to the gates, and that's when I, I could see the armed guards standing on either side. They didn't look one bit like they belonged in the cartoon. They were drawn, broad, and stiff, with sharp, angular lines that made them stick out like a sore thumb against that rounded feature. The ones of the crowd. Their bodies didn't move an inch. They continued holding their rifles toward the crowd of people still shuffling in. They would open fire at any minute. If you were wondering, yeah, I was completely unnerved already. But if I backed out, the option to watch might disappear again. And Mickey, Mickey had done weird stuff like this before. I mean, did he go, did he, he did go to hell, right? Maybe I'm just imagining that one. Either way, Mickey continued walking and, and eventually came to one of those large, boring buildings that I mentioned. Looked exactly like a hangar on an airfield would look today. People from the crowd around Mickey were piling into it. The animation was good enough that I could see all the faces of the people who were stuffing themselves into the hangar. They were climbing on each other just to find some room to fit. Their faces were gaunt and empty like, like they were no longer thinking for themselves. It was ghoulish the way they looked at the camera and made eye contact with me. A hangar that big? I wondered how many people you would, you would need to put inside until they needed to crawl all over each other like that. The crowd thinned out more and more as Mickey passed by the one hangar after another. It was, uh, it was around that time that Mickey was the only one left on the screen, passing by a few more empty hangars that was sure to be filled up. Then I noticed there was, there was no music. The sharp sounds, they were still there, but it wasn't, it wasn't a soundtrack. The source of the sound became all too clear when Mickey walked by one of the smokestacks, where two more guards were positioned. Some cartoon cow, I think, was pushing a massive wooden box and I could see the limbs. Limbs were hanging over the side, limbs that were still moving and clawing at the wood. The box was placed on a lift that started tilting until the box slid and fell into the door of the smokestack. Once the box was in, I could see, I could see curly flames rise, brought back to life by a new source of fuel. And the sounds, 
Those sharp sounds got louder. They 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 barely had the energy to fight back, but the people in the box still had still had it in them to scream, to howl like absolute animals. I saw so many smokestacks when the camera had panned out earlier, all spewing the same thick, dark smoke into the sky. I barely noticed that Mickey had stopped walking. He was just looking at the camera. He was smiling. A smile on his face while the bodies burned behind him. Finally, he released his hands and he outstretched his right. He lifted his palm as if he was directing the camera, and slowly the camera started to rise, showing the smokestacks in all of its brick-by-brick brick glory. Then it rose higher and higher. Higher until we were at the top where the smoke was spilling up. I could see horrific and tormented faces twisting in details of the smoke. Souls still screaming out as if they had turned to soot. The camera pushed into the smoke until we were on the other side and I could see the factory. It didn't stop there though. The camera continued to rise in the sky. Showing more and more of the factory that seemed to span well beyond the horizon. So many long rectangular buildings. These were tall towers that housed guards. All looking out into the crowd of people filling up the hangar. Searchlights directing the masses where to go. They followed like rats under the looming threat of gunfire. As the camera rose higher and higher, the screams of the people below meshed with returning circus themes, and the, the factory just kept going and going until the shape seemed to all become one. So many pillars of smoke fueled by those people reaching high into the sky, and my stomach was churning. I, I was in no immediate danger, of course, but the quality of the animation, along with how, how I came across it, created a nauseatingly surreal experience. Every so often, I would see planes flying over the factory. They had big bulging cartoon eyes in the front and they were they were spilling some sort of powder over the masses they would float down until it became nearly impossible there's no way of knowing what the powder was but I can imagine those planes flying over the town once I saw it at the beginning the town where everyone was so cheerful and excited to see Mickey where the people in the cars danced along with the music it was close to the end of the film the short thing that it was the once the camera was tilted completely upward, I could see all the smoke from all of those bodies was collecting above. It looked as if it was night. It looked like there was a single star in the sky, but I could tell. I could tell by how the sky seemed to move around and bubble that I was seeing the smoke. It was hiding the sky behind it. I had never seen the sky, even when the camera had panned out as far as it could. It was all a shroud of dark pollution, looking straight up. In the swirling darkness, I heard something booming, something with so much bass, I could hear my speakers vibrate to the point that I was worried they'd burst. I was reminded of those faces that I'd seen in the smoke earlier, all crying out to the camera. And this time, however, there wasn't a collection of faces pleading for saving. It was just... It was just one. One face. So massive that it wasn't able to completely fit in the frame. It was... It was a smoky, twisted thing. A, a large, gaping mouth and eyes bigger than city blocks that looked like, looked like it could devour the world in an afternoon. And I couldn't tell if the camera was getting higher or the face was lowering, but either way, I saw less and less of that thing until all there was was black. And then a thin line of white text appeared in the darkness. Coming 2021. And then the movie ended. And I was sitting back, and I was sent back to the menu where I discovered the picture in the first place. I sat there, staring at the menu, now devoid of Mickey's great world parade. Felt like I had exited a fever dream. My fingers were gripping the fabric of my jeans so tight, one of my fingernails had started to lift off the skin. My, my knuckles were bone white, my mouth was drier than it had ever been. I was there watching that option to show back up. I, I thought that I saw the menu glitch out a few times, but I don't know. I, I, I swear it was real. I can still see it now. I can remember it now. All those weeks later, I keep thinking that I'll see something pop up, the outline about it, about, about the disturbing content. I've heard Disney has had all these secret films they keep from the public, things that weren't supposed to, things you weren't supposed to be privy to. Disney has so much influence, so much power, and we feed them, we follow Mickey like we're being pulled by the collars, and I, I can't get it out of my head. The face, this, 
The smoke, it all keeps following me. Every time I close my eyes, I see the darkness. I swear I can taste the ash. I can smell the burning... The burning bodies. And worst of all, worst of all, I still can't decide. I can't decide if, if coming 2021 is, is a release date or a warning. Hey there, kids, and happy holidays. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching tonight's video. If you enjoy watching videos here on YouTube, then you should check out the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, which is available on Spotify and on iTunes and on Google Play and everywhere like that. If you enjoy listening to Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, you'll enjoy watching it on YouTube because it's the same show. You guys are both hearing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Also, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon or on Popbase. You guys who are the top supporters on Patreon, especially, thank you so much, like Joey Gilbert, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chaminsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mühlmeister, Eliminator 86, Nubsky, Finley E. Hopkins, Steampunk Sinner, Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. Everyone there, as well as in the description down below. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to also follow me on Popbase, where you can get a couple of different updates here and there and play games along with me, then you can do so on your phone. It's on Android and on Apple. And if you guys are looking for something like a hot beverage, such as, say, a tea for the cold winter months, then my wife is still selling teas over at etsy.com slash shop slash ivory monocle tea, including a Mr. Creepypasta tea that has me on it dabbing. D don't actually, actually, if you do order that tea, request that sticker because we made it, but she didn't want me to put it on the, on the tea because she said it wasn't professional. I think it's the, whatever. Check back throughout the entirety of the holiday season for more horror stories every single day, forever. Sweet dreams, kids.